and dear colleagues. We would like to thank you for joining us today and we would like to welcome you to FAO in Geneva Fisheries Trade Talk session today organized in collaboration with FAO's Fisheries and Aquaculture Division. My name is Punar Karakaya. I am an economist at the FAO Liaison Office in Geneva, and today I will be moderating the session. Before starting the event, let me share some details regarding the logistics and housekeeping. This is an hybrid event where virtual participation is also possible through Zoom platform. This event will be in English only with no interpretation. We will try to have some questions at the end of the session if the time permits. For those who are participating virtually, we would kindly request you to submit your questions in the Q&A module. After the session, we will be sharing the presentations and recording with all participants. That's all for housekeeping issues. Before introducing today's topic, I would also like to thank our WTO colleagues helping us logistically in the organization of this session today here at the WTO. Today's session will provide an opportunity to elaborate further on the issue of stock assessment and sustainability, as well as the challenges associated with, associated with the assessment and management of fisheries. This session will also demonstrate existing and emerging FAO knowledge and methods regarding the stock assessments and sustainability, including a regional perspective from Asia. With this background, let me introduce our speakers. Mr. Dominic Bourjon, Director of the FAO Liaison Office in Geneva, Mr. Rishi Sharma, Senior Fishery Resources Officer in the Fisheries and Aquaculture Division of FAO in Rome, Mr. Ruau Nunes, International Relations Officer from the DG Mare of the European Commission, Mr. Ridwan Muliana, Director for Fish Resource Management in the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Hussein Dede, Fisheries Engineer and Senior Officer, officer at the General Directorate for Aquaculture and Fisheries in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry in Turkey. Mr. Nunes, Mr. Muliana, and Mr. Dede will join us today virtually. We will also hear from Mr. Simon Fonja Smith, Senior Fishery Officer at FAO Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific via video recording. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Bourjon for opening remarks. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Pina. Uh, excellencies, distinguished delegates and participants, dear colleagues. Uh, Firstly, I would like to thank you all for joining the, our session this afternoon. We appreciate your support and interest in FAO work. As you already know, FAO supports its members' effort to formulate policies conducive to improved food security by strengthening evidence and analysis, providing capacity development and facilitating a neutral dialogue away from the negotiating table. As FAO in Geneva, Last year, we included the topic of fisheries in our trade talks series, which, as you might be already aware of, aims to enhance the understanding of the current state of global fisheries and aquaculture. These dialogue series also aim to inform on the existing and emerging FAO knowledge and tools for transforming aquatic food systems and promoting their responsible and sustainable management. Fisheries are a critical source of economic prosperity, cultural identity, food security, and livelihoods around the globe. Let me, let me touch upon some figures. According to the latest edition of the State of World Fisheries and Aquaculture that was published in 2022, global fisheries and aquaculture production reached a record high level in 2020 with 214 million tons. The amount destined for human consumption was 20.2 kilo per capita, more than double the 1960s of 9.9 .9 kilo per capita. The primary uh, fishery sector employed an estimated 58.5 million people. It is estimated also that 600 million livelihood depend on fisheries and aquaculture, including subsistence and secondary uh, sector workers and their families. Moreover, FAO's fisheries and aquaculture outlook through 2030 predicts an increase in output consumption and trade, albeit at a slower rate. Those figures actually show how the sector is critical and will continue to play an increasingly essential role in delivering food and nutrition and meeting the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Sophia, 2022 
on the other hand, also underlines that the fraction of fishery stocks within biologically sustainable levels decreased from 90% in 1974 to 64.6% in 2019. However, it is also noteworthy to mention that 82.5% of the 2019 landings were from biologically sustainable stocks, which represents a 3.8% improvement from 2017. Indeed, this improvement highlights that effective fisheries management has been proven to rebuild stock and increase catches within ecosystem boundaries successfully. Therefore, Meeting the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and SDG 14 targets will also depend on the ability to effectively measure the status of global marine fish population and fisheries. Assessment of fish populations, which will require enhanced data and capacity building, is essential for directing ocean management agenda and tracking SDG indicators. With this context in mind, I believe today's discussion on fishery stock assessment and sustainability will assist in further grasping the intricacies of this topic, including the accompanying challenges, while highlighting key FAO knowledge and methods in this area. I believe that the timely focus of today's session will also be in instrumental in guiding members with their efforts on the WTO agreement on fisheries subsidies adopted in June last year and in the second wave of negotiation ongoing to achieve a comprehensive agreement on fisheries subsidies. With that, I thank you. Thank you, Dominic, for, for your opening remarks. Now we will have Mr. Sharma's presentation on fisheries stock assessment and sustainability. Please wish it, the floor is yours. Thank you, can, can, can people hear me? Is it on? Um, uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I will uh, sharing my screen in a second. Um, uh, the focus of this talk really is on overfishing and how we define it and how that may play into your um, negotiations as well. Um, let share my screen. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, high level sort of overview of this topic and as such uh, if there are more details or specifics people may want uh, you could probably uh, contact me later at the end of the talk I will provide my uh, contact details so uh, you could uh, contact it contact me by email if you wanted to talk more um, a lot of this also stems with, with the work we do uh, in FAO on our flagship publication, which is the, the State of World Fisheries and Aqu Aquaculture, which is taken out every two years. And, and this uh, publication also provides sort of an overview of what's happening uh, globally. And we are also, I will briefly mention this in the talk, we are also uh, in the process of really updating some of the methodology here and uh, providing a much more comprehensive view of what's happening uh, globally. Um, okay, sorry. So uh, my talk is going to focus on four different aspects. One is going to be uh, on how we define overfishing within and use this in the context of uh, management uh, globally. Uh, I will, as I said, I'll mention briefly what is happening globally with uh, overfishing trajectories. Um, and then also talk briefly about how good governance and management ties in with sort of the no overfishing SDG target and, and leave you with some remaining thoughts at the end of this uh, presentation. So a lot of what we do in, in fisheries, um, 
obviously, like re recently with the WTO negotiations, there have been ratifications uh, to the treaty. Uh, four countries have signed on uh, to this recently. And um, we are re really in the midst of sort of an evolution of how uh, agreements go. I will also talk about that briefly because there is a, a UN history of you know, fish stocks agreements and the Kobe process and how this may actually come in with the SDG framework and eventually uh, hopefully get to a place where we have sustainable fisheries globally by uh, 2030 or shortly after that. Um, in order to do that, you really have to have some way of measuring uh, performance and measuring a target or where you are trying to get to. So we have whatever indicator you use, and this could be uh, you know, stock biomass, it could be a harvest rate, it could be a fishing mortality rate, it could be a targeted CPUE, it could be the size of a fish, the average size of a fish uh, that you're trying to target. Uh, all those could be different targets. And that's uh, how we track it is we, we sample some information in, in, in a fishery or in a, in a natural system. And from that sample, we make inferences of how things are going either with a direct measure or with an indirect measure where we use it in a model. And then we, we see how we are with respect uh, to our target. Are we below it? Are we above it? If we are below it, what are we going to do? And we try to avoid uh, some catastrophic point. So uh, if you're looking at this in the banking terminology, it's stress testing. You don't want to go below a certain threshold. That's the same sort of idea. We call it a limit in a system, and we don't want to go below that. So uh, the way we actually look at this, uh, I'm not going to get into the details because initially I had a lot of math and things which people told me to take out because people don't want to see that here. Um, so this is the essential idea. And um, what we are trying to do is avoid crashing a system at some point. And, and that's where also sort of the, the, the subsidies negotiations come in because you're trying to avoid that system crash per se by not encouraging, you know, <laughs> I need to use my laptop with, with PowerPoint. Okay, so we are going into reference points, the target that I just said, we call that a reference point. And uh, it's really a measure of, of stock health from a biological perspective. And, and it also could be a place where uh, fisheries managers, if you're managing a system, wish to either achieve or avoid falling below. So those, there's a target and there's a limit. Those are our reference points. And biological reference points often reflect the combination of sort of several components of stock dynamics. Uh, I'm not again going to go into the biology, but there are lots of processes here biologically, which we encapsulate with a mathematical formulation, which then gives you this reference point magically. And, and that's this point that we are trying to get to uh, for all stocks in a system. Uh, Currently, we are not doing that great globally, but the SDG target 14.41 is trying to achieve a place where we will be above that target eventually. Uh, and we all often look at this as a ratio. So we look at it whether whatever um, measure you're trying to take, whether it's a biological biomass or it's a, a target, you know, on a fish size or it's a catch efficiency in a fleet, it's always looked at as a ratio. So if you're above one, it's basically a good thing. If you're below one, it's not a good thing because you're trying to exceed that target. So the ratio should always be greater, equal to or greater than it. When you're below it, 
you need to do something to fix the system. Um, so that's the idea. Um, so they're basically biological reference points are used to provide fisheries managers information regarding uh, the health of the stock, the impacts of fishing on a stock, and in doing so, assist in the provision of advice to management from the outputs of stock assessments. Uh, they also can be used to evaluate the performance of how are we doing as managers on a system. Uh, if you have a target you're trying to achieve, are you achieving it? Are you not achieving it? So it's, it's a guidance tool for how well you're managing the system as well. I promise that this is the only slide with some math. There are two different ways we can do this. The one on the left panel here is sort of the approach that we are doing within FAO, which uses something called a surplus production model, which simplifies a lot uh, of the biology into two parameters, R and K. K is sort of the carrying capacity of the system. R is the intrinsic growth rate of the system. So if you remember your math, this looks like a logistic function, you know, with, that, with, a, with the S shape, it's a sigmoidal shape function. As you achieve K, it flattens out. When you're at the bottom, it's that, it's a bottom part of the S. It's, I'm not going to show that here, but it looks like something like this, if you follow my cursor. Uh, the right side is a lot more complex models that we use in, in assessments globally in the tuna world and uh, in sort of the developed countries. And they're called integrated assessments, where we have a lot of parameters. It's a lot of nonlinear model fitting, but the same idea is achieved there where you have a max based on you, you change the system to different estimates of fishing mortality and you'll get, uh, assuming all the other, other things stay constant, you get a shape of what your yield, which is the amount you can extract from a system looks like. And again, you can see there's a maximum there. That's the MSY, MSY, that most people are familiar with. And that corresponds with a biological um, biomass threshold in both cases. Um, so over here, you see uh, this is where MSY occurs. And that's where the overall biomass in a population might be. And this is what the spawning biomass on that population may be. So there are different levels of targets you may want to achieve in a system as well. Um, so the definition of overfishing is quite vague. Um, but based on these functions here, you can have a sustainable catch at any level on this function. But we are trying to achieve MSY. That's the biological maximum you can obtain out of the system. And that's the value that we are trying to evaluate overfishing against. So if you're to the right of this curve, you're not taking too little, but you're not overfishing. If you're to the left of this curve, you're taking too little, but it's because of excessive fishing pressure. So you're basically, when your biomass is greater than your reference point here, then you're fine. If it's less than it, you're not fine. Uh, a sustainable catch can exist at many different levels of stock size. That's what I was trying to show you. So on all points on that function, you are sustainable. If a stock size declines, sustainable catches might still be made. It can be made at very low levels. You can still have a sustainable fishery. So, but it's by definition, a sustainable catch is not overfishing. Our definition here is where you're below MSY utility, then you, because of fishing pressure, if they're less to the left side of that biomass yield production func function, you are in a, in a territory you don't want to be in. So for better or worse, one of the most common objectives in fisheries management is to achieve this MSY. Um, a 
possible working definition of this is uh, the greatest amount of fish you can take out of the water without impairing the ability of the fish left in the water to replace the fish you've taken out. And there have been lots of criticisms of this, of this construct. Um, one is that MSY and BMSY, the biomass level that supports this catch, are very difficult to estimate. You're working with natural systems. You have a lot, you know, in markets and in economics, you have data that's very precise. The data in fisheries is not. It's based in a natural system. There's a lot of variation. There's observation errors. There's sampling errors. And you're trying to make inferences out from that. So that propagates into your models. And then you don't get to see MSY that clearly there might be some biases in, in the estimates. Um, as BMSY tends to be quite a low proportion of unfished stock size, that's another criticism, depending on the production function. Over here, it's symmetric. Often in some of these integrated assessments, it's not symmetric and it's left skewed, which means that MSY occurs when the population can be quite low as compared to sort of the you know, natural biomass at virgin population sizes. So if you go into a pristine system, we call that you know, the natural biomass or virgin pristine biomass. MSY can occur in some cases at 30% of that. So the criticism is that you really are pushing your stocks down too far. Uh, if you use a precautionary approach and use a symmetric distribution, as the one I showed you, which is what we do in FAO, then it's at 50% of that um, carrying capacity on natural system. Um, so there are many types of overfishing that can occur. I'm not going to go over all this in too much detail for, for time. Um, but there's something called growth overfishing. Uh, that this really occurs when, when your gear is catching too many small fish. Um, it's excessive effort, very large fleet size, the capacity in, in, in the region. That's something you all will have to deal with with WTO and the subsidies, the capacity. If there's too much and they're catching too many small fish, it, it basically reduces. You want to reduce that uh, overall mortality on that juvenile com component because it can, it can impair you know, you're not allowing enough spawners to spawn, which can then cause, it's called growth overfishing. Recruitment overfishing, it's basically reducing the spawning biomass to the point that your recruitment is impaired, which means you're not going to get, if you got 100 normally out of a population and you forced a population to a level that you only get 20, that may be where your recruitment impaired. I'm just giving you examples for say, you know, on average, you'll be getting 100, but you pushed it down so far down, you're now only getting 20. That's a recruitment overfishing sort of construct. An ecosystem overfishing, uh, that occurs when the species composition and dominance in a marine ecosystem is significantly modified by fishing. So we take out the large predators, the, you know, the trophy fish and the, long-lived species and then you get a very different system which is by the low uh, short-lived species with high resiliency um, but their trophic levels are a lot lower. Um, going back to this overfishing point I really want to drive that in here. Again there are two constructs this is something which came out of the Kobe process which occurred in in 2006-7, they, they looked at a way to represent this graphically. As I said, it's a ratio. So it's a spawning biomass over target spawning biomass on the x-axis. And there's a fishing mortality over target fishing mortality on the y-axis. So with respect to, to the biomass, you want to be to the right of it. With respect to the mortality, where do you want to be? You want to be greater than one or less than one? Less than one. 
So you want to be below and you don't want to be exceeding it. You're fishing too much if you're above it. So really, um, this is sort of the quadrant you want to be at. And this is the quadrant you really want to avoid because you're overfishing and your stock is depressed. Here, your biomass is okay, but your fishing rate may be too high. And here you take effective action in your fisheries and your biomass may be low, but your fishing rate is okay. And so you hopefully are rebuilding the population. So natural evolution of a fishery is you come, it's a pristine state. There's a lot of fish out there. The fishing effort begins. You start overfishing, you eventually reach this overfish trajectory. Then WTO steps in and you know introduces their measures overfishing starts recovering and you're supposed to come back here. That's the way it's supposed to work, theoretically. Um, easy. <laughs> so anyway, that's not the way it works. You all know that, but, <laughs> but theoretically, that's the way it's supposed to work. Uh, in, so now within the reference point, I've given you one, which is the MSY reference point, but there are many others. And often in Australia, they use uh, different ones. In the US, they use F40, F.4, F.1. Those are proxies for, for these FMSY targets or biomass reference point targets. Um, so it could also be based on some uh, you know, basically scalar off that MSY value. Now, in FAO, we do this global evaluation of stocks and fisheries. And we don't really worry about this F categorization as they have in, in the Kobe process, the tuna RFMOs. What we do is we look at where's your biomass with respect to MSY. And if it's, if it's greater than 1.2, we say that the stock is being underfished. If it's less than 0.8, we say the stock is being overfished. So we have some wiggle room around one. And this is the target area that we say we want to be, 0.8 to 1.2. Now, the reasons why they decide, decided to do this, because it was basically the uncertainty which we talked about in, in measuring this. So we said, if you're managing to one per se, that's being too restrictive. So we need some uncertainty around that estimate. So let's say uh, if you're between 0.8 and 1.2, you're doing fine. If you're below it, you're not. So that's the rationale. But after that, there's been a couple of papers really emphasizing the pretty good yield concept, which suggests that your stock, uh, if it's between 0.8 to 0.1 uh, to 1.1 of what uh, the target uh, MSY value is, you get pretty good yield. You don't get, you know, it's getting 90% of the possible theoretical maximum. So this actually works pretty well with that construct too. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but there's a whole, and this sort of, is how do we get back into a system which is in a healthy state when you're overfished? Uh, there are things called harvest control rules which work with these reference points. And that's a whole another uh, area that we could spend probably another half an hour. But in essence, those reference points that, that I talked about, uh, they could be quite different. As I said, they could be either BMSY or they could be these scalars with respect to BMSY. Um, the limit, though, has to be pretty hard, uh, hard, you know, bound where you really take some serious actions on a fishery if you want to recover stock. But you could have a relative uh, fishing mortality, which is graduated from something called a threshold to the limit. And you have a target that you're trying to achieve. And if you're below, your biomass is below a certain level, then you start reducing your fishing mortality so that you hopefully achieve um, a healthy stock in a short amount of time. 
Now those short periods, again, these are things in conventions and RFMO languages, which are not very well defined, but how um, this high probability of being in this green zone, what does that mean? Well, there was some guidance you could take from the IPCC or from Canada or from Marine Stewardship Council uh, as to what we mean by high probability of being in a certain area. And then short period, what does that mean? Is it two years? Is it 40 years? Well, the USA uses 10 years or one and a half generations. Australia uses 10 years plus one generation. This is generation time of the species you're, you're trying to recover. And the MSC uses two generations. Now, going back to this concept of uncertainty, because we all, I mean, these are not hard fixed targets. There's a lot, as I explained before, there's a lot of uncertainty in what we are trying to do. Uh, so how well we observe or measure it is a big piece of driving these uncertainty. There's natural variation in all these processes. There's a response to the fishery itself to these changes in the system. You might be trying to manage it, but there may be lag effects in your management and how it actually affects the response. Um, you don't really know what your target is. You have no, no clear objective. That also causes uncertainty. And then how your management system really responds also causes uncertainty. So I'm not going to get into that again, but I can, I'm just going to run you within the assessment arena itself. That three, this is the same data set we are using. But there are three different uh, profiles of population models that can fit this. One is an extremely resilient one, so you can fish hard. And one is not a very resilient one, which you can't fish out. So depending on, on what the actual realization of the system is, you could have a very different outcome. This will give you a higher target reference point. Um, this will say you're doing a lot worse than where you are relative to the virgin system. This says you're doing fine. You're about where you were initially. So. So all these factor into your decision-making, uh, model selection, how you do that is important. So in reality, we are, we are trying to pinpoint one point here, but it could be anywhere within this entire range. You know? And there's uncertainty in that point that you're trying to manage to. And what is the appropriate management action? Do we reduce fishing effort or, we, or do we not? Um, a simple example here, you know, you see like with hurricane systems, this is uh, Katrina, which hammered New Orleans in 2005 or six. There was a cone of uncertainty. It could have come anywhere in this area. Unfortunately, it landed right in New Orleans and it destroyed a lot of that. So the effect of, of a decision should factor in the consequence of what your alternatives are, and what, what if you're wrong on your projection, what kind of effect it has on the system? So here you see, uh, you, act, you act as if you think, you know, it's here. Your optimistic model is correct. You, you say, I'm gonna assume it's here and I'm not gonna take any decision and I'm gonna keep fishing the way I'm fishing. If you're right, you're fine, but if you're wrong, it was actually there, you're really going to destroy the stock and probably head towards extinction a lot faster than, than you thought you were. Now, if you look at this conversely from the opposite angle, that you're a fishing industry or, or party that really wants to catch, and you act as though you were here, then if you're right, you definitely reduce effort, you get the stock rebuilt. What if you were there and you declined your effort? There's a lost opportunity. So you really have to balance these out and how you do it. And again, that construct of an MSC really can help you do that. You know, reference points, there's a lot of uncertainty in it. 
the way we operate, the, the targets, there's a lot of uncertainty in it. But if you operate with a certain set rule specification and you have some target objectives from your fishery, such as you know, no variation in your catch, you want a long-term yield of so much, you can achieve those objectives with a high probability without really prescribing to these point right here that you want to achieve. And you'll achieve a system in a good state. And that's really where, you know, in fisheries science, we really want to go to. But unfortunately, MSY will, will remain as a construct for, for a lot longer than, than we think. It's been there for 50 years, and it's going to stay there probably for the next 50. And for good or bad, it actually forces us to really uh, work with something that can be standardized and looked at globally on, on one, one measure uh, globally pretty easily. Um, so going back again to the history of you know, development, we have all these RFMOs which came into uh, being over the 50s through the 60s. Uh, more recently, we have the Pacific Commission, which manages tuna in 2004. We had the Law of the Sea Convention, which took you know greater part of 30 years to negotiate, and it initially started in the 50s. It was ratified around 91, 92. But the big part of it was really, the detail really went 70s and 80s, and then it was ratified eventually in 92. Um, MSY, the construct came in 77. It's still there. The UN Fish Stocks Agreement came in 1996. Uh, 1995, the precautionary approach to fisheries came in 1996. Kobe process began in, in the mid 2000s. All the tuna RFMOs started doing MSEs. Bluefin tuna is now certified in Atlantic. It's recovered. 2011, it was supposed to be going extinct. I mean, there was a big problem with the stock, but this whole harvest control rule and MSE sort of process, which began with the Kobe process has really started moving things in the right direction. And now uh, with, the, with, this, with this new uh, convention and new articles of this convention that we are looking at, we hope that will also move us into the right direction. So it'll probably be 22, where we had the WTO agreement and then it's ratified in a certain time. And, and then hopefully that also enhances this. We'll extend it to the right hand here. Um, Going now to another topic that I said, globally, how are we doing? Uh, this is sort of uh, a time series that we, we've, been, uh, we've been reporting on for the last uh, 45 to 50 years. It was started uh, by John Gulland in the 70s. And when we started, there were about 10% of the stocks being overfished. Um, right now, it's about 34%. So though it's tapering off, you know, there's a, there's a declining trend, but it's sort of gradually tapering off and we hope to see it start to improve, but we haven't seen it as yet. Uh, globally, um, sort of the Mediterranean is one of the worst areas in terms of uh, overfishing. 36.6% of the stocks are sustainably fished. The rest are not. Um, Another poor area is sort of the western, um, western Pacific, no, eastern Pacific, southeastern Pacific, um, which is also really high. So these two areas are pretty poor. The southwest Atlantic is also not doing too great. Uh, neither is the northeast Atlantic doing that good. So in general, it's all around 30 to 40 percent globally now. We are revising a lot of these estimates uh, because we, the time series that we are using was on a smaller subset of stocks. So now we are increasing our sample size to do that estimate. As you can see, a lot of the landings that come globally are from Asia. Uh, and we don't have a lot of information on these stocks. So what, what when we do these 
uh, global trajectories, it's based on population assessments. Uh, in Asia, there's very few assessments. And so we rely on expert elicitation methods and other processes to find out what's going here. We are in the process of revising all that. We are really taking a hard look at our data sets. We are consulting with countries. We have one-on-one -on -one, uh, regional workshops with different parts of the world. And then we revise this entire methodology. We've done this in four areas so far. And you can see uh, the trend is, is basically we are adding more stocks. So the basis of the inference is now becoming a bigger pool set and it's changing. I mean, it's changing by four to 5% in each region and it's coming down because basically we, people are telling us, why are you not reporting on these other stocks here, which are actually in good shape and we are managing them well. And so when we incorporate information on these other sets, it goes down from 39% to like 33%, 31% to 29, there's hardly any change here. But this one, area 51 went down from 36 to about 29, 30% here. So it's, it's going down. And we're also going to be starting on embarking with these infographics, which will start displaying also other things, how important it is to a sector. Uh, in Asia, obviously, it's massive fishery. It's really key to the economies, employment, everything. So Southeast Asia is, is a completely different animal than North, Northeast Atlantic. So you have to take that into account when things are not all in great shape. You know, I mean, maybe 30% overfishing is not so bad, given the magnitude of how important it is to the region. So I'm gonna leave with some parting sort of thoughts here. Um, most countries really deal with mixed stock fisheries and complexes. And what, are, what we've all we've looked at so far is a sing, single species con, construct. And, and really that, that changes things, you know. I'll also leave you some thoughts on MSY and uh, maybe there's other ways to manage your fisheries. So here's a, here's a snapshot of a study done by CSIRO in Australia. And uh, Beth Fulton is in charge of this project. And it shows you over time uh, this is a system uh, in the Gulf of Thailand where historically you were fishing down here with a yield curve, those curves I showed you before, uh, which says that you should be at an exploitation rate around 25% and your yield target would be 300,000 tons. This is in the 50, 1950 to 1964. Now we are operating under this regime where you're getting a lot higher yield because you have the most resilient species really in this. The less resilient ones have been fished out. Uh, and you're getting more in terms of food production. This is probably a better place to be than here. But here you had the more higher trophic value species, which were part of the catch, which they're no longer here. So, uh, you really need to consider that in, in how you manage. What are your objectives, really? You have to have very clear objectives from your fishery. In these multi-species, multi-gear fisheries, you are not going to get an individual MSY. The, the multi-stock MSY will always be lesser than the sum of an individual MSY. So you are prescribing something here with our agreement, which these people are not operating under. So there's a disconnect. Second, not all species can be fished at. I mean, it's impossible because everything has a different production function. So if you actually try to achieve a system state, which is optimal, some will be below it and some will be above it. But you, you would probably penalize a place because half their stocks were below the target which you think they should be at. So, um, and then the third thing is 
if I look at the construct of how things are going with just the species caught here, I'll miss out that the overfishing effects have had on species that were present here, which are no longer in the catch here. So it has to have a balance of all sort of trophic intervals, but your reference points could be maybe different for the different groups. That's something to think about. Uh, MSY, you know, there was a Larkin's paper in 77, which talked about MSY, it advocated yields too high, then spell out how to slice the pie, and we buried it with the best of wishes, especially on behalf of fishes. You don't know yet what will take its place, but hope it's good for the human race. So I'll leave you with this thought. MSY is still here. This came out in 1977. You're still using it. We're using it with little modifications, um, but 50 years on, it's still living. It's still part of integral part of all our UN agreements. So um, it's not all bad within a harvest control rule framework, I think you can use MSY and the uncertainty around it to optimize the system. But I'll stop here and open it up to questions. Thank you. Oh, however you want to con continue, Pinar, sorry. Okay. And thank you, thank you very much, Rishi, for this very informative presentation. Uh, actually, your presentation put forth a very comprehensive overview of the topic, including the definition of overfishing, how fisheries management and assessment work in that context, historical development of the concept of measuring sustainability, including the reference points, and related challenges and uncertainties and their potential impact on decision making and management. Now we will move to the panel discussion, where we will hear more from uh, our speakers about their regional and national perspectives and experiences in relation to stock assessment and sustainability. First, we are going to hear from Mr. Simon Fungus-Smith. His presentation today will provide a regional perspective and focus on the characteristics and diversity of Asian fisheries. Unfortunately, we could not have Simon today with us either virtually or in person. Therefore, he will be providing his remarks through a video recording. Shivani, could you please share the video recording? Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to make this short uh, panel uh, observation on the characteristics and diversity of Asian marine fisheries and how this influences their management and measurement of their sustainability. The Asian region is home to some of the most diverse marine capture fisheries in the world. We have a large number of species that are caught and almost fully utilised and discarding is unusual in most of the fisheries. This diverse nature of vessels and gears and species challenges the way that we assess these fisheries and as such we may have to accept that there are poor data estimates for many of them and that we have to be comfortable with only a general idea of the status of most stocks and accept that some fisheries are too small or too diffuse to assess. There's also a huge number of people involved in the fishery, and this also means we may not be able to control them to the same tight biological limits that science would recommend. The Asian region represents a significant global catch and largest participation in the world. The two major FAO fishing regions, um, which and um, the Asian countries that fish in them catch 34.2 million tonnes. That's about 38% of the global marine catch total and 64% of the global small-scale fishery catch. The Asian region also has enormous small-scale fisheries and is the largest employment of fishers with around 24.6 million people in small-scale fisheries and 1.16 million in large-scale fisheries and over 97 million altogether employed throughout that value. Most commercial fisheries, such as the offshore small pelagic fisheries, the neuritic tunas, tuna and billfish, may be easier to assess and manage using conventional single stock methods. The vessels are larger, per seiners, long liners, midwater trawlers. They're commercial, so they have access to better data and record keeping. And their more targeted fishing means there are fewer species or stocks to assess. So it's easier to apply an, a single stock assessment method to this type of fishery. 
However, multi-species, multi-gear, and the multi-scale nature of most of the region's coastal fisheries challenges how we think about sustainability and assessment. Single stock models generally only are appropriate to assess and manage those highly targeted industrial and commercial fisheries I've just mentioned. But the coastal fisheries of the region are dominated by a mixture of small, medium and large vessels, often targeting the same stocks within an area. And the huge numbers of species to assess if you use a single species approach is far too expensive and will not really provide an overall management solution anyway. Multi-species assessment approaches are coming up and they're offering the, perhaps the best way to go for these kind of fisheries. It provides an idea of the total multi-species MSY but we can also look at uh, sensitive species and apply some thresholds to them within that. If we focus on groups of fish and rep representative indicator species within the fisheries and using this mixture of reference points, not solely MSY, allows us to uh, have a more effective and tailored approach. So we use BMSY overall for the mi mixed uh, species fisheries and then select representative indicator species for groups of alike species and also for ecosystem keystone species and then using B limb for particular vulnerable species so that when we are looking at the overall stock we can apply some thresholds to try to ensure that certain vulnerable species are not being severely overfished. We then use these reference points to determine the trajectory of the fishery towards rebuilding or staying within a general overall sustainability envelope. The advantage of this approach is that it can reduce the stock assessment burden by applying it to assessment to fewer species so this is less cost and less time but also it's a simpler kind of message it facilitates science to management communication it also allows an estimation of the overall capacity that can be used within a fishery and that capping or reduction of certain gears segments or vessel segments um, is possible within that and it allows us a degree of ability to partition between the small-scale fishery and the large-scale fishery. However, using these approaches does require us to acknowledge and accept that single species uh, MSY is neither useful nor appropriate to measure the status of many fisheries and that managing using indicator species and assessment of multi-species BMSY will have a higher degree of uncertainty. The management measures that will be applied will be broad scale input control measures and that highly reactive management uh, is probably not possible so we need to take longer timelines uh, on reaction. And that rebuilding fisheries in this region that have been highly modified over the past 40 years will not necessarily return to their original state and that a rebuilt stock mixed stock will still have some vulnerable species that are tending to be overfished but we will try to keep those above a bee limb threshold and resilient species may actually be underfished and anyway throughout this whole system some decisions of management will still need to be moderated to take into account socio-economic decisions particularly relating to the small-scale fishery there are success stories from the region uh, around this approach. There's growing awareness regarding the need for sustainable management and their countries are investing in assessment and management. This is being accompanied by efforts to register vessels, track larger commercial fleets and upgrade policy and legislation. There's also greater awareness for the potential for the use of multi-species models to try to unravel the complexity of the region's fisheries. And this has been applied in at least one country's fisheries to date. However, overall in the region there's still a significant human capacity building need on how to undertake these types of assessment and determine appropriate reference points and build these into management. Thank you very much. Um, we would like to thank Simon for his presentation and his remarks. I hope he will be able to watch the recording after this session. His presentation actually highlighted the specifics of the fisheries in the Asian region and various challenges associated with those characteristics. The presentation also provided approaches to address those challenges, including the multi-species assessment and efforts to this end in the, in the region. Now we will hear from Mr. Nunes. Mr. Nunes will provide us with the EU's perspective and experience with regards to stock assessment and sustainability. The floor is yours. 
please please mr gomez uh, thank you very much. Um, well, first, thank you to the FAO for for uh, for this opportunity and uh, for uh, and for this uh, these talks. Um, it's it is very important because uh, better knowledge of these issues would uh, allow us to have a more uh, more informed discussion um, there in in Geneva. So I, I'll I'll make a, a short presentation of of. Um, of the EU common fisheries policy, you can you can move to the next slide, please. Um, so so uh, the the EU fishing fleet it's more than seventy thousand vessels, uh, three quarters of which are are uh, small small scale coastal fishing, which which uh, means uh, less than twelve meters and with no tow gears. Uh, then then a quarter it's uh, what we call large scale, more than twelve meters. Or less uh, than 12 meters, but uh, but uh, with all gears, which fish in uh, EU member states CZ or or uh, nearby, and then uh, less than 0.4 percent the distant water fishing fleet. So uh, if you can move to the next slide, uh, the the the, co the EU common fisheries policy determines that uh, EU fish stocks are managed at, a, at EU level through multi-annual management plans. Uh, so those um, those are usually five years. Um, it, it can be it can be more or less depending on specific situations, but usually five years. Regionalization. This is this is um, a bottom-up approach that allows for for uh, the lower level authorities and stakeholders to, to design tailor-made management on a on a regional scale, and. Uh, this implies a number of adv advisory councils at regional level in in the EU, and and the main the main method the main measure uh, of fisheries management would be uh, annual catch limits, the, uh, known as a total allowable catch. So in in the next slide you can see um, in uh, uh, in terms of sustainability the objective um, the objective is uh, MSY uh, for all stocks. This this has not been uh, has not been achieved. That's the objective. Um, but despite of the of the progress is in the last in the last few years. But we'll see we'll see later how 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 this is done. Um, the assessment the the, the actual uh, stock assessment is done by uh, by scientific bodies. In particular, uh, I would highlight the role of of uh, the International Council for the Exploration of the Seas uh, ICES. Uh, focusing more on uh, North Atlantic, uh, uh, Baltic uh, Sea, and then the General Fisheries Commission for uh, for the Mediterranean, um, dealing with with Mediterranean Sea. So those those bodies they they calculate they calculate uh, fishing mortality rates, um, and those then they are uh, th those calculations are compiled and tabulated by by the SDCF. This this uh, committee for fisheries, which is composed by by uh, independent independent experts in the EU, um, as as you see, there's a number of of stocks stock assessed in in uh, in both sea basins. Uh, we can move on to the next next slide. Uh, in terms of um, of non EU waters, so there are two types of access agreements. So-called northern agreements with uh, with countries like uh, like Norway <clears throat> or Iceland, um, where where there's um, the uh, either EU fleet has access to the waters and vice versa. Uh, so so this is this is done this is done uh, mostly on an annual basis. And then uh, the sustainable fisheries partnership agreements. Uh, there are a number of those. I think around 13, 14 uh, currently. Mostly with the with ACP countries and also with the, with Greenland. So this is based on uh, EU fleets uh, through these agreements uh, having access to to the surplus uh, determined by by the the coastal state concerned, uh, and which implies a, a number of uh, sectoral support uh, measures also for the coastal state. Um, then um, RFMOs. I think the pre previous presentation uh, went uh, went deep in in, uh, in RFMO in RFMO uh, measures. Uh, on top of it, there's there's the the 
specific uh, regulation on the sustainable management of the external fishing fleet, which is specific uh, for um, for distant water uh, vessels uh, of the EU. So operating in third country waters or on the high seas. Uh, then on on next slide we see how how this is done. So um, there is the data collection framework, uh, which is the basis of work for for ICES and uh, and GFCM. Um, so each member state has their national work plans and provides the annual implementation reports. Those are evaluated by by the scientific technical and economic committee as well. Um, and and then those those results are uh, are updated uh, are uploaded in the the databases the joint research center databases so basically the scientific advice coming from from ICES for from uh, RFMOs uh, is based on this on this uh, data collection framework which at 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 its uh, um, uh, in, in the beginning is done based on on uh, things like fishing trips and uh, and the uh, research vessels uh, then on on the status of the stocks um, uh, for this uh, there is uh, analysis of of, of uh, different factors uh, trends in fishing pressure uh, biomass um, and a number of of specific uh, specific actions um, uh, I'll not go. I'll go in, in specific examples, but there are many, many cases of, uh, as as mentioned earlier, of a, of a stock that that was uh, that was uh, being subject to overfishing. Then the measures enter into force, um, and then the for for the recovery of the stock in a in a in a determined period of time. Um, and here enters also what is what is the the co-management between between at EU level and uh, and at member state level. Um, I'll move on to the to the next slide. One one important feature in in uh, EU management is um, the notion of balance between fishing capacity and fishing opportunities. Um, so these member states have to report annually on each fleet segment. A, a fleet segment is uh, is a group of vessels of a determined uh, length class. So it can be, for example, from six to twelve meters, which is operating in a in a defined area, and using the same principal gear type. And for this, we, we use uh, various biological uh, and economic uh, indicators. Uh, for example, st stocks at risk uh, is when shows whether a segment is catching significant quantities of stocks that are at high biological risk uh, then if if more uh, if it, if this is more than 10% then this indicator turns turns red so uh, so there's a, a cause for concern uh, then if overcapacity is detected detected uh, in this specific segment then a uh, member states must implement uh, an action plan on top of it, uh, then there are there are uh, a total capacity ceilings uh, uh, per member state. Uh, so on on the next slide, uh, we see as, as as previous speakers have pointed out, um, it can happen. Then you don't you don't have enough data. You cannot you cannot make your your MSY assessment. You don't have enough reference points. And uh, also 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 as, as mentioned in the previous presentation. Uh, a very important notion is, is the precautionary approach, um, which means that the, the, the absence of adequate scientific information should not justify uh, postponing or failing to take management measures. So, so this this should always be be applied in the in the absence of um, of enough data. And then, uh, when 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 this happens, there are various types of input controls. You can have uh, uh, closed uh, closed areas, uh, closed seasons. You can have uh, restrictions in terms of gear or uh, mi minimal landing size uh, regulations. Um, then on on the uh, still on management um, after 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 the defining total allowable catch. Um, um, you member states have to define the quota allocation. This is this is often done through through negotiation between between member states, 
Um, one important uh, feature is is the the landing obligation. So uh, since 2009, um, there is this obligation of of lands uh, all fish uh, caught at sea. So uh, the prohibition of of discards. Um, then, as, as, as mentioned, uh, very important, the advisory council recommendations, uh, advisory councils, they, they, gather, they gather all, all stakeholders, uh, uh, scientific, economic, NGOs, uh, so the actors on the ground who, 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 have, who have more in-depth knowledge, and those are, are fundamental for, for the decision making. Uh, and finally, uh, there's uh, control and enforcement measures. This this can be there. There are different types. The, the more traditional ways: uh, inspe inspections at sea, inspections at landing, uh, data analysis, uh, aerial surveillance, but but also but also more uh, more modern means uh, with uh, remote electronic uh, monitoring tools and and sensor data. So. Um, in a, in in a nutshell, the, the the EU system is is complex. There are many checks and balances, many bodies involved, but uh, this is this is all uh, we believe uh, necessary in in, su in such an environment to have the 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 best possible management to 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 ensure sustainability of the stocks. So thank you very much, and and uh, I'll be available for uh, for uh, for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nunes, for your presentation. Uh, you highlighted the specifics of EU common fisheries policy, in, in particular, the EU's efforts and methods concerning the measurement and sustainability and management of fisheries. So we would like to thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Muliana. Mr. Muliana, could you please share with us Indonesia's perspective and experience on the topic? Please, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can see you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished uh, participants. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, Indonesian fishery management, including the fishery stock assessment. Uh, thank you uh, for Mr. Risi. Uh, giving us the deep, uh, deep explanation about the MSY and also the uh, state of the fishery. Uh, here I'm with a team uh, from Indonesia, uh, the person who close related to uh, our topic now, including uh, we have uh, Professor Indra Jaya from uh, Fisheries Expert and Chair of National Commission of Fish Stock Assessment. And also we have Mr. Nilan Toprebowo, uh, the senior officer in uh, Ministry of Marine and uh, Fisheries of Indonesia and uh, Fisheries Subsidies uh, uh, Specialist. Uh, next slide, uh, slide please. Uh, firstly, I want to show you that uh, the profile of uh, Indonesian uh, marine and uh, uh, fisheries uh, Indonesian waters about uh, 5.8 million kilometers squares uh, consists of uh, archipelagic territorial waters yeah, and also an uh, exclusive economic zone. The Indonesian archipelagic is uh, between uh, two oceans, Pacific and uh, in the, uh, India, also between two continents, Asia and uh, Australia. Uh, here is our fisheries and marine profile uh, with uh, 17,000 more islands and 95,000 more coastal line. Uh, we have big uh, biodiversity, consists of species of uh, fish, coral reefs, and also uh, mangroves. Uh, we realize that uh, conservation area, including mangroves and uh, coral reefs, are important. So. We promote to increasing the coverage of uh, marine protected area or MPA to uh, 32.5 million hectares in uh, 2030. Uh, the MPA are important, uh, as we know, uh, as a nursery and spawning ground uh, for fish. So it's very important for uh, recruitment ability uh, to increasing the uh, fish stocks. 
also uh, we have uh, very dominant uh, small scale and artisanal fisheries yeah, we have more than uh, 80% uh, the uh, vessels yeah uh, below 5 gross tons yeah. and uh, about the small scale and artisanal fisheries uh, the contribution is very big yeah uh, 80% uh, person live in coastal area yeah and uh, 20 uh, sorry 2.3 million uh, people yeah as artisanal fishers uh, producing 4.8 million tons of, of total catch yeah. about the fishery uh, we uh, also have uh, calculating the msy uh, for uh, Last year in 2022, we have uh, uh, 11, uh, sorry, 12.01 million uh, tons of uh, fish. And the number of the TIC uh, is uh, 8.64 million. So uh, the uh, number of production in uh, 2022 about uh, 7. Uh, 49 million tons. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide also tell about the marine and fisheries role in Indonesia in uh, uh, three uh, in three area uh, for uh, source of uh, livelihood and life for coastal communities, and also to contributing uh, to uh, GDP and for environmental support. Uh, I think it's very uh, uh, important in our country, the marine and fisheries roles in Indonesia. Uh, we have uh, 7.5 million people depend on Indonesia's marine resources uh, as a fisherman, also as uh, aquaculture uh, farmer. Yeah? And uh, about the National Fish Consum uh, Consumption is approximately uh, 55.37 kilograms per capita per year. Uh, and about the income, uh, I think it is still low. Yeah, we uh, should, uh, uh, Indonesia should develop uh, to increase uh, the uh, level of income. Uh, for now, it's still uh, uh, 275 per month US dollar. Uh, also, about the contributing to GDP. Uh, it is including seaweed, alga. Uh, we have uh, fisheries production, uh, 24 point, uh, 48 uh, million tons, uh, giving the export value of 5.72 uh, uh, billion US dollar. Uh, main commodities are tuna, shrimps, and seaweed. The fisheries GDP is uh, 2.77 percent of national GDP in uh, 2021 uh, years. Uh, in env uh, environmental support, we have 20, uh, 28 sorry 28,000 kilometers uh, square for our reefs, uh, and uh, about estimates of annual for our reef based uh, tourism pilot as explore approximately uh, 30 uh, sorry. 3.1 billion uh, approximately uh, data from UNEP to 2018. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now we go to MSY in uh, in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, this figure show that the history of MSY uh, office resources in uh, Indonesia. Uh, the calculation of MSY has conduct, uh, conducted uh, nine uh, times at least from starting from uh, 1977 and uh, last year to uh, uh, 2022. We can see uh, that uh, the level of uh, MSY yeah, is uh, quite uh, dynamic. Yeah, depend on uh, the methodology and also our uh, fisheries policy. For example, in 2014, yeah, uh, we close uh, the uh, 
uh, fishing vessel uh, from uh, uh, the foreign, uh, the foreign, uh, foreign fishing vessel uh, who uh, uh, that operate in uh, Indonesia. So uh, the impact uh, in MSY in 2017, uh, the MS, uh, MSY value is uh, raised. We have also uh, the TSC, of course, uh, the TSC number. It is uh, uh, for precautionary reports, yeah. Uh, Eighty percent from uh, MSY value and depend on the uh, stock health condition. Uh, if we uh, look at the uh, marine fisheries production totally in in uh, national. We have a uh, uh, number uh, from 2015 and uh, 2015 to 2021. Uh, this figure show that uh, our marine fisheries production is still uh, under the TAC. Yeah, yeah of course, in uh, totally, uh, uh, this condition is a good. Uh, under fishing or uh, moderate, but uh, we know that uh, in particular species uh, and in particular uh, fishers manager, management area uh, has uh, cured the uh, overfishing. Yeah. Uh, we have nine groups of uh, fish species uh, per FMA, including large pelagic group, small pelagic group, uh, the Marsa fish, Coral fish, uh, squid, shrimp, lobster, blue swimming crab, and crab. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is uh, the methods for calculating stocks of fish resources in Indonesia. We have raw data, the data set, uh, including uh, data catch and effort. Yeah, from we gathering from capture fisheries statistical data. Also, we have uh, biomass and distribution data, the fishery hydroacoustic research uh, data at 11 uh, fisheries management area. Also, uh, we do uh, population parameter biological data analysis. Uh, the data from research and uh, on stocks of fish resources by the resources uh, agency. About the methodology and analysis, uh, we uh, conducted the analysis uh, of cats and effort with uh, equilibrium BDM from SEPA, also non equilibrium uh, BDM and stochastic non equilibrium. About the analysis of hydroagustic, uh, we uh, we have estimates, uh, estimator Gracia, yeah, from Gracia uh, at all. The output is, of course, the MSW and TSFLU. We have nine groups of uh, fish species per FMA. Also, we have the number of total allowable cats, TSC per group of fish species per FMA, and also the level of utilization of fish resources per group of fish species per FMA. The calculation uh, conducted by a National Commission on Fish Stock Assessment, or Komnas Kajiskan, which consists of academics, uh, researchers, uh, representatives of fisheries experts, and representatives of fisheries association to be able to work independently. Next slide, please. Uh, we have a framework fisheries management based on special and based on council to make a better management of fisheries. For the condition, the characterize of the VMA, multi species, multi gears, multi habitat, and multi stakeholders, we have is resources and we should take the uh, governance uh, matters uh, to uh, build the fisheries management plan or if MP. If MP is prepared from 
the aspiration of all stakeholders according to their respective roles. We have uh, IFMP, uh, Fisheries Management Plan in uh, 11, yeah, uh, FMA. And also we have FMP for eight species, including uh, five uh, FMP uh, issued and uh, three still drafting. We have Fisheries Management Council uh, to conduct the uh, management. Uh, it is a forum for coordination and strengthening uh, synergy of stakeholders in accordance with their authority. The output is a policy uh, recommendation uh, based on sustainable fish resource management and to get the optimized fishery management. Uh, next slide. Uh, we develop also fishing log book data to support data monitoring. Uh, for now, we have uh, 7,090, uh, uh, sorry, 900 uh, uh, separate vessels implementing fishing logbook. So uh, we know uh, about the uh, tracking and coverage of uh, fishing vessel, also the uh, value of uh, cuts per unit effort or productivity per uh, fishing vessel and uh, per fishing management area. Next slide. In uh, international and regional, uh, we also uh, uh, active in uh, doing management in fisheries. The Indonesia membership in RFMOs, uh, we uh, are member in uh, four. RFMO, yeah, uh, the IOTC, uh, the WCPFC, uh, CCSBT, and the IATTC. Uh, the profile about uh, our membership in RFMOs, uh, we can see in the next slide is, yeah, it's the Indonesian compliance level on RFMOs in IOTC. We can see that, uh, the compliance uh, value is uh, uh, good, comply, yeah, uh, rising uh, year by year. Also in CSBT, the Indonesian compliance status, uh, active person in 2020. Uh, it is because the uh, we has implemented an electronic CDS application application system. In WCPFC, uh, the compliance status is uh, 87. 0.1% in 2021. Uh, Indonesia has fulfilled 27 of the 31 CMMS that applied to the WCPFs. Next slide, please. Uh, we do also monitoring and surveillance platform. Uh, we have a, a center for monitoring, yeah. Uh, to monitor some indicator, uh, the uh, maritime, uh, marine, and fisheries uh, aspect. Yeah. Also, we uh, have integrated marine and fisheries data collection information system, including a vessel monitoring system, the fishing logbook, the observer on board. Also, many aspects, including aquaculture, conservation areas, and etc for monetary resources management and uh, IUVC. We call it the Net Center. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, now, uh, what is the challenges for Indonesia in calculating MSY? Uh, there, there are four. Uh, firstly, uh, the large area of Indonesian waters with a particular characteristic of resources multi species and multi gears. So it requires more time and uh, effort to calculate uh, the MSY. Uh, second, the dominance of small scale fishermen in Indonesia fisheries requires uh, more efforts to collect uh, catch data. The establishment of uh, fisher groups or institution, uh, institution can significantly contribute for data collection. For example, in fishing logbook program. Number three, the facilities and, facilities and infrastructure as well as 
human resources to support data collection at fishing ports are uh, inadequate, inadequate related to number one. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, the costs uh, required in the process of collecting data and calculating MSY are large. Uh, the, so these uh, uh, challenges for Indonesia in cal uh, calculating MSY. Okay, next slide, please. The conclusion, uh, firstly, uh, stock assessment activities has been carried out for the past 20 years to ensure Indonesian fisheries sustainability. The challenge of improving a data quality has been strengthened over time. And the second, Indonesia has established an independent national commission on fish stock assessment or Komnas Kajiskan, which consists of various stakeholders, including the academ academicians, researchers, and fisheries association to oversee stock assessment. Number three, uh, Indonesia has been implemented uh, MCS uh, system, including vessel monitoring system, uh, fishery surveillance vessel, fishing logbook, observer on board, and for sampling. Thank you. Um, we would like to thank you very much, Mr. Muliana, for your points. Um, in your presentation, you highlighted the importance of the sector for Indonesia, and also you shared your own experiences with regard to the calculation of stocks and management, considering the specific nature of the of the fisheries in, in Indonesia. So we would like to thank you very much. Now, uh, we would like to move to our last speaker today, uh, Mr. Dede. Mr. Dede will share with us Turkey's experiences and um, perspectives with regard to the topic. Please, Hussein Bey, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pinar. Good afternoon and good evening. Good, uh, good morning, all members. So all uh, I will try to explain Turkey's shared stock assessment studies, practice, approach, and uh, sustainability. <clears throat> Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you going to share your own screen? Or do you want us to assist you in sharing your screen and presentation? I already. It's okay now? Yes, it's okay. Okay. But you just need to put it into, into the PowerPoint format. Now it's okay? Yes, it's okay. Okay, Turkey is surrounded by seas on three sides and has a surface area of 26 million hectares and has a uh, one EZ, EZ in the Black Sea. There are 550 species in our resources, 380 species in inland waters. Commercially, 100 species is fished. There are 15,291 fishing vessels in the sea. In the sea, 90% of fishing vessels under the 12 under 12 meters in Turkish fishing fleet. Generally, fishermen are fishing in our uh, own territorial waters and EZ. Also, we have fishing uh, vessel that fishing uh, in the international waters out of fishing season. The ministry has stopped issuing the fishing licenses for, for new fishing vessels in 2001. Other hand, 1,264 fishing vessels were bought from owners who wants to give up fishing activity. This action was applied under the buyback program and the remote from the fleet by the ministry. When we compare uh, Turkey's fisheries production with world production, it's, it has 0.4 uh, percentage. Aquaculture production uh, has been increased continuously over the years. However, the amount of obtained from the seas through the fishing tanks to decrease continuously. This due to decision taken by the government 
for the sustainable use of resources. Year 2000 production is amount estimated. Uh, in this slides, figures for 2001 shows that declining is continued. Another reason for decrease is that anchovy has a large share in our country's marine fisheries. Although the minimum length of anchovies is nine centimeters, but we think to due to climate change or environmental reasons, weakness in the fish weight detected during the last years, uh, late, uh, last two years and fishing season, an extra ban was imposed for the, uh, for the anchovy. As can be seen in this slide, anchovy has a significant share in Turkey, Turkey's marine catch. Fisheries law is, is the basis of fisheries management. Regulation, communics, and instruction are made accordingly. In these regulations, practice in principle of protection, resources, continuation of biodiversity, and sustainability are the main targets. During the stock assessment, the decision making minister tries to take in, uh, into account all factors like a climate change, urbanization, environment change, fishing activities, invas uh, invasive and alliance, alliance species, other activities like, like a transport pipeline, etc. <clears throat> there are four fisheries research institute, two agricultural research institute as a department in the ministry. In addition, stock determinate. Uh, in addition, jo uh, joint stock determination monitoring studies carried out with the uh, fisheries university faculties, fisheries research unit, units uh, uh, of the universities, and scientific research council of Turkey. Minister have two research vessels. <clears throat> General Directorate for Agriculture and Research and policy conducting research activities in accordance with the demand of the general directorate for fisheries and aquaculture. Nowadays, around 52 research projects are continuous. In addition, stock assessment, genetic, improvement of selectivity of fishing nets, studies also carried out. In these stock studies, various parameters were, uh, of the aquatic environment, stock amount and composition are evaluated by using different methods. For example, on the top, uh, with NASA's uh, ocean oceanographic uh, data like temperature, salinity, monitored and compared with the movement of the stock and species, getting information from the fishing vessel in the field of fishing areas, left side, right side, sorry. <clears throat> On the other hand, benthic structure of the sea monitored at the designated stations. Also monitoring is conducting in terms of pollutants from the determination sam uh, determinate, uh, determinate uh, sampling points. And these studies carried out according to five years program. The next monitoring program performed up to 20 years. <clears throat> Sorry. Acoustic methods are, are also used in stock determination Usain studies Bey. in the sea. Yes. Same way, we cannot see your slides. Think you are seeing. Yes, everything is fine. Sorry. I need to. Yes. Acoustic method also uh, are also used in stock determination studies in the sea. This slide demonstrates 
Tarbot and Haddock's identification and assessment is in this evaluation parameters such as length, weight, reproduction uh, are taken into account. <clears throat> In the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea, one of the important resources for our country and other countries. Monitoring of demersal fishes in the sea is carried out not only with national organizations, but also with RFMOs such as GFCM. Similarly, monitoring studies of demersal fish stock are carried out in the Black Sea. In these studies, removes and bioindex module, which are also requested by the GFCM, are used since and since, uh, since then, study is carried out in our country. Result, results are quite good. Training or joint studies are given to researchers from other countries in our country with collaboration GFCM. At the same time, uh, water parameters are monitored at different seasonal times. <clears throat> Within the framework of the project carried out biological data collected in the Asian and Mediterranean seas. Monitoring studies are carried out for tuna breeding areas and movement also. In our country, negative developments may occur from the time to time due to climate change or environmental effect. For example, the mustelage event seen in the Sea of Marmara affected not only fish, sherry, but also individual in the stocks. New approach have been put forward for the Marmara Sea. Floods and other problem occurs in Turkey. This is not only negatively affect fishing of our fishermen, but also can cause damage to fishing vessel. In our country, a quota system is applied for eight species within the framework of international rules, RFMO quotas, which we are members, and national measures. <clears throat> In our country, quota tracking is followed through the fishery information system. The data regarding the fishing are checked by the staff, our provincial directorate, and uh, on the landing declaration and after verification, a catch certificate is issued. When is quota, uh, when the quota tracking system is reached the 75% limit, as you see on the slide, the information uh, in the system giving warning the, uh, uh, and system turns to red when it, it reaches 90%. Then General Directorate Fisheries Aquaculture makes the estimation how many days need to uh, for quota will be full full. When it's over, systems automatically stops issuing the catch certificate. Fishery inspection and control done by the marine and inland waters were landing points, fishing vessel, fish markets, retail points, <clears throat> cold storage warehouse, and road. In this control and audits, the document prohibited species, length, time, fishing, tier, and validity of licenses, permits, and records are examined. Control and inspection are carried out by the Ministry, Central Local Inspectors, Coast Guard, Gender and Police, and Customs and Municipality uh, Police. Penalties such as seizure of products confiscation of fishing tools and equipment, fines and suspension of cancellation, license applied according to contrary situation detected during the inspection. <clears throat> there are 380 coastal structures for different sizes that fishing vessel benefits from. The minister determines the landing points for different fishing, fishing activity. All kind of, all kind of information, of fisheries are collected fisheries information system. Necessary information shared with organizations such as Turkish Statistical Institute, FAO, GFCM, and ICAR. Fishery information system includes registration system for fisheries, geographical information of aquaculture areas, 
licensing issues, monitoring of fishing vessel, ICAT activities, and cyclists. Fishing vessel over 12 meters are monitored with the VMS system and necessary legal sanction imposed on, uh, on, this, on those who not, do not comply with prohibition. Sustainability based on resource management approach is applied to our resources. Our ministry which does not only deal with fishing operation, also produced 14 species with the species found in our sources through the seven production stations and released them to nature. Our goal this year to release 100 million fish uh, to marine and inland waters resources. On the other hand, in the, uh, in the years, 45 square meters of net have been collected with the project removing lost and abandoned nets in the seas. Artificial reefs are created and monitored in, the, uh, in, in this area, determined with the, the framework of project identifier, identify areas suitable for the project, uh, protection of fish and other living organisms. There is a good progress in this area. Another important activity, identification of protected areas and protect, protected species. There are 87 protected areas and 59 protected species in our country. Rule of, uh, rules on fisheries made by the General Directorate of Fisheries and Aquaculture. In line with the recommendation of the Fishery Advisory Board and Fishery Scientific Committee, and then made as a decree determining commercial and sportive fishing. It's published in the, in the official journal. In the, uh, in the decree, taking account the result of, uh, during the decision taken, taking account result of stock studies, social economic status, quotas, and its, uh, its applications, past fishing data, and decree covers fishing place, fishing times, fish size, species, fishing gear, prohibited matters. These board and committees include relevant fishermen's organization, non-governmental organization, universities, and ministry units. The sustainability of stock is important in the fishery management. One of the problems experienced in this regard existence of more than one fishery in the same area which caused problem between the parties. Other problems experienced in the accuracy of collect, collection of information received from fishermen, climate change, alien and invasive species, incomplete and insufficient historical data, changes in fishing migration routes, breeding and feeding area cause negative effect in stock management. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hussein Bey, for, for the presentation, for your remarks, and for sharing with us Turkey, Turkey's experience on stock, stock assessment and sustainability. Uh, we have had very informative and comprehensive presentations today. We would like to express our gratitude to all the speakers who dedicated their valuable time to be with us today. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, so we need to close the session soon. Uh, but for those who are interested in, in, in the topic more and who have comments can reach out to us in Geneva and we will be con contact connecting them with our colleagues in, in Rome and in technical experts in Rome. Uh, before concluding, let me briefly wrap up. Uh, today we have heard about the importance of stock assessment. We also heard about existing and emerging FAO knowledge and tools regarding stock assessment and sustainability, as well as the regional and national experiences from our speakers. While the presentations all highlighted that various actions and activities are being taken at different levels and scales on this complex issue, there still exist various challenges associated with the assessment and management of the fisheries. We would like to thank you all to be who, who, who are with us today and who, who joined the session virtually. We would like to wish you a very nice day ahead. Thank you so much.